There's also a category four, uh, but that's less important, and I don't think you guys have covered that yet, so we won't go through that today. These are what's most important for the course, so we'll, that's what we'll cover, uh, try to cover today. All right, so these are our um, general patterns. Now, what do you need to know about these? Well, first of all, you really need to know the mechanisms that allow you to get these, and some of these are some of the most complicated mechanisms in the course, so we'll probably spend a lot of time on that today. But you also, um, and, um, you also need to be able to draw the products without going through the mechanism. You have to be able to do it both ways, why do you have to do it, be able to do it without the mechanism? Because, like I said, some of the mechanisms are so long and complicated, you don't want to have to draw them out every single time. So we, we need to learn both approaches. I think just writing things out like this makes it easier to see how to draw the products. Again, I think it's a good idea to show the nucleophiles joining from the same side as the um, carbonyl oxygen. Not because that represents the true geometry, but just because it shows how the nucleophiles are displacing the carbonyl oxygen. This first nucleophile displaced the pi bond to the carbonyl oxygen, and then the second nucleophilic attack displaces the sigma bond. So it's helpful to put them in the same place just so you can see the changes that are happening. We're, we're not trying to show the, the, the true geometry here. Something else that's going to happen a lot that you might have already seen is that many of these reactions are reversible. That means very often you can start with one of these reagents and turn it back into an aldehyde or a ketone. And that turns out to be very important. So we'll try to cover that as well. That's why it usually has like equilibrium arrows. Exactly. Like yeah. Seen that before. Yeah, absolutely. So I didn't draw equilibrium arrows here uh, because they're not always that way. But many of these reactions are reversible. Um, and so you can either go from here to here, or you can go from some of these products back to here. It depends uh, on the situation. And that turns out to be very important. And that doubles our work, because then we're going to have to learn the mechanisms for the reverse reactions. And we're going to have to learn also how to do the reverse reaction without the mechanism, because those are all very important um, things. Let's see. So we should start going through some specific reactions, but there was one other general point I wanted to make. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Now, um, has your instructor used the term hidden carbonyl? No. no. Okay. Some instructors like that and some don't. Um, but I like it, so we can kind of use it together. Um, remember that um, if the reaction is reversible, you could take these reagents and turn them back into a carbonyl. Therefore, it's useful to often think of these as hidden carbonyls because you can turn them into carbonyls. So we're going to have to see what are the cases that are reversible that give us hidden carbonyls. And that's one reason why it's so crucial to put the asterisk here, to remind you that even though this doesn't look like a carbonyl carbon now, there are things you could do to zip it back to here you to make it look like a carbonyl. You just didn't call it a carbonyl, right. you talked how like, many times you have to know if the carbon could be potentially carbonyl. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why it's so important to put in these asterisks. Because otherwise, it doesn't look like a carbonyl at all. So how would you think to, to, um, to, um, that you can make it into a carbonyl? Uh, by the way, if we are going to make this into a carbonyl, where is the carbonyl oxygen going to come from? We're going to have to deliver a carbonyl oxygen. Well, we want to be reversing the forward reaction. It's probably adding water or right. a supply. Or more rarely, hydroxide. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, you got that. So that's the other reason why it's so important to see how the oxygen leaves in the forward reaction so we can see how to reverse the reactions. If we want to reverse the reactions, we do that by adding hydroxide or more commonly water. And that again is why it's such a good idea to asterisk the oxygens here to remind you that even though this looks nothing like a carbonyl right now, it is delivering the oxygen for the carbonyl. Okay, well those are our general ideas. Um, some of these steps don't match every single reaction. I just wanted to get the general idea. And now we can take a look at some specifics. So we'll start with category one, but we'll spend most of our time on category two, because that's the most complicated and, and most important. OK, does that make any sense so far? Yeah. All right. All right, so we'll start by um, looking at uh, an example of category one, and then we'll go on to category two. 